Welcome to live chat. You're live. Right, let's see if this works now. Right. We've got one person back. Is it showing up now properly, whoever you are that's just joined? Yes, that's more like it, Sean. I'm here. That's better. Right, so it should just show up now. So for any, <laughs> for anyone, we are, yeah. Ah, yeah, that's better. Just nothing. Looks like we go live, yes. And we're back. Cool. Excellent. That's better. Right. So what I might do for everyone that was here earlier, um, I'll go over the solar panel stuff again, what I talked about. Um, and then that way people can, uh, even what happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Now we've got like 118 people on here. That's better. So for anyone that's new, <laughs> anyone that's new, um, I had a bit of an issue. I, I didn't set it up right. I had it as unlisted and you're supposed to put it as public. And uh, thank, I don't even, I can't even remember who said it. Somebody mentioned it on here and I didn't even, I didn't even get your name. So whoever it was, thank you. So that seems to be much better now. So hi everyone, welcome back, or welcome if you're just getting here now. Um, I have did run through a few things earlier about the solar and everything, but I'll, I'll loop back around and talk about that at the end so that anyone that's already seen it, they don't have to stick around to the end of this live stream. Uh, good day, Sean from the States. What time's it in the States at the moment? Well, you're eight hours behind, so about midday, is it? There we go. So I am at home, so that's why I'm drinking beer. I would never drink and uh, be in charge of a vehicle. I did actually get through the first one during the first part of this live stream that I messed up. So I don't like it. It's too crowded now. <laughs> Sorry. Evening Sean from Red Roof. All right, mate. Uh, evening Sean, how are you? I'm good. Just got back from Cornwall. Hertfordshire, 334. Don't know what that means. How's the reverse camera holding up? CJ, right, oh, so I've got a little bit to talk about, about my reversing camera, actually. Oh, my leg, did you hear that? It clicked. Oh, I am 39 now, so I'm getting on a bit. Um, reversing camera is working fine. Um, do you remember when I when I set it up, it, there was like two lines, there was two wires for it, and I was like, why is there two wires? Did I even put that in the video? I don't know. But there was two wires for it. And it kind of came up with like this blue, just blue no signal sign on it for ages. And what I ended up having to do is disconnect the wire and put the second line in, and then it worked fine. So I don't really know. I mean, it's probably just a cheap Chinese thing, you know. I mean, it did cost me like 160 quid. So I think that's quite a lot for a reversing camera. I could have probably got a better quality one or even gone to Halfords or somewhere and got a, a decent one. But I wanted one that was sort of integrated to the um, the backlight so that it didn't, it's it kind of made it look a bit more like a sort of delivery van. I was 39 when I had my son too. This is it. You know, there's nothing quite, I'm getting cold so I'm shutting this. <sighs> Nearly lost my beer. Hi Sean, what watch are you wearing? Uh, this is a Casio Duro. It looks really expensive, but it was like 60 quid. It was actually 50 quid, but then I put a stainless steel strap on it. Have you fixed the solar battery charger? Ah, I did talk about that and I will loop back around and I'll show you what I've done. Um, but yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit, a bit dodge at the moment. Impossible brew for me, alcohol free. Oh, I've not heard of that one. I have to give that one, give that one a go. Turbo, Darren. I am going to talk about the turbo and everything that's happened to the engine, and everything that's wrong with the engine, and um, my thoughts on transit vans as well. But I'll get to that. Uh, what the drink of choice tonight? Tribute. This isn't a, a, a sponsor for St Austin Brewery. I did actually used to work for them, but um, yeah, it's not sponsored because. I've asked them for free beer, but they won't give me any. <laughs> uh, 
Hi, Maxine, Matthew Wall, evening, Matt here from West Midlands. Big fan of this. Well, I need a drink now. <laughs> I'm trying to read the comments, but they're coming in so fast, it's quite difficult. I love watching your video with Jack the Spru... Hi, Sean. Me and my wife watch all your videos. We both love Cornwall. Just like to say thank you. Ah, that's very nice. What fridge are you using going to use? CJ, I did make a video recently where I installed my fridge. I've got a Dometic CX, CX3 or something. It's like a 35 litre uh, cool box, essentially. It's on now, you can't hear it. It's pretty, pretty quiet. So I bought Dometic. It was really expensive, but I, I just went for it because... It is, um, well, you just, they, they've got really good reviews, haven't they, at the end of the day. Uh, uh, I took out my, all my Victron stuff from my camper van and replaced it all with one Bluetti AC200 Max solar generator. A few no issues now. And I've got a video coming out soon where I'm going to talk about that, um, about whether you need to install what I've installed in this van, a leisure battery and everything, because it does actually work out a lot more expensive um, than, than just sort of sticking in a power station. I mean, I, I love my power stations that I've had and that I've got, but I just don't, for some reason, I wanted something a bit more permanent in this van, but with all the issues that I've had with it, I've kind of just thought that no, I could have just chucked one of those in there. It would have cost me a fraction of the price and it would have done everything. And I can control it through my app. You know, they've, they all come with apps and you just literally click on it and then it all works. So, got to go now. Cheers. No, I, that's not me. I was reading the comment. I'm, I'm still here. I need a beer. Julie from Montreal. What time is it in Montreal, Julie? The other channel sure makes me want to convert my Renault traffic. Well, it depends whether it's your work van, but there are plenty of builds that you can do out there where you can still use it as a work van and then just sort of, you know, like on my reaction video, that guy that had that pickup truck, it turns out he lives in Australia, I think. And he, um, he uses it for work and then he just puts his the stuff in there that turns it into a camper van, so. 2138 up here in Somerset. Well, it's not that late, is it? <laughs> Soldier Road van yet? No, I haven't. Fire stick. I um, I keep wanting to sell the Vivaro, but I've I've sort of halted off from it because um, it is, well, I need it at the moment because it, things keep going wrong with this van. And until this van, until I'm 100% confident that this van is ready to go, I don't need to be working on it anymore. I haven't got engine problems or anything like that. Then I will sell my Vivaro and I'll probably just put it on eBay. I was going to auction it off. Well, not auction it, but like raffle it off so that maybe one of you could have whooped on it. But unfortunately, I need to sell it to pay off the engine on the, on this van because, you know, it's a lot of money and I can't afford to just sort of dig £5,000 out of... Uh, out of thin air, unfortunately. I don't get paid nearly enough from making these videos, so. Um, someone asked me what I do for a living earlier. Um, I I don't talk about what I do for a living simply because my the place I work for don't want me to talk about it. I don't do YouTube full time. I don't earn enough money from this to sustain a family of three. Um, but, you know, hopefully one day, it will take off enough that I can I can do this full time and I can commit more time to it. And then it will give me sort of so much more freedom. I really want to do meetups and things. And, you know, I see other YouTubers, like they go to like events and things. And I just can't do it because one, I've got work. And two, you know, I've got a family. But I mean, when they're when Charlie's a bit older, he'd be able to come with me anyway. But, you know, it's what it is. Let's have a look and see. You're an OnlyFans content creator. If only, if I was doing that, I wouldn't be doing this. No one's going to pay to see my fat, hairy body, are they? So, <laughs> so there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of talks when I posted this 
that we were going that it was going live and I was going live. Um, a lot of people were saying, thinking that I was on Lee Vans. That's funny. I like that, Ben. Very good. There was a lot of comments where people were saying, "Oh, are you are you quitting YouTube?" I'm not quitting. I'm not going anywhere. I just wanted to just, as I mentioned earlier, and I can't remember whether it was in the the failed attempt of doing this live stream or not, but there's a lot of things that I talk about in my videos that I don't leave in the videos because it takes away from the story I'm trying to tell. So I figured I could just do a live stream every now and then, keep you all up to date with what's going on with the van and with life and everything. And, um, and then I don't have to sort of fluff out the videos with stuff that's not that important to everyone, essentially. Big up from Lelant. Ah, just down the road. Only vans. I'll pay for that. Uh, love your videos a great series on the van build lately well done on all the videos so as i i mentioned earlier that i wanted to um i'm going to do a reaction video where i react to some of my early youtube videos so i've been on youtube for nearly four years and there's a lot of videos that a lot of people haven't seen so i figured i could just watch them see how cringy they are react to them and then you will get sort of an idea as uh, whether they're worth watching or not. And I appreciate that a lot of people are here because they just like the van life stuff. And that's fine. Um, but, you know, I've made some fairly funny videos that are out there that a lot of people haven't seen. It's like one that I made. And it was one of my early ones. I thought it was really funny. And it got like, I don't know. I think it was like... 300 views or something and I get that in like 20 minutes now when a video goes live so it's just weird how things change isn't it came across your van on the commute to work don't worry I'd never disclose what a beautiful location fan at fisherman ah, well thanks for your um discretion <laughs> it's it's quite weird now because my wife gets a bit like not embarrassed but she gets a bit shy when uh, we're out and about and people want to sort of have a picture taken with me which is still really really weird um or if they just want to come and say hello you know i do normally keep a, a love sunday sticker on me at all times so if you do see me and you you're shy or you don't want to come over you think you might be interrupting me i love meeting people so just come over and if i've got a sticker on me i'll give you one for your car um what is that, Shannon? Is that like pink poos or something? Was that ice cream? Um, so yeah, so always, but she always come over and say hello, but she gets a little bit shy. So don't be offended if Kate just walks away. But it's just because she's, she just finds it really weird. I still find it weird, to be fair, that people actually want to listen to my voice and, and watch what I, what, what videos I make. But, you know, it is nice to, finally sort of get a, a decent response to the amount that I that I put in the amount of work that I've put in over, over the last sort of nearly four years you should have popped in for a drink when you came to Reading for the wheels Mike D yeah this is the thing I don't ever tell anyone where I'm going I just sort of go places and then people were like oh I live just down the road from there Need the good camper cards published. What does that mean? I was in and about hail last weekend and was looking out for you but didn't see you. Well, there's only one of me and it's big Cornwall, as small as it is, is actually quite big. So, you know, I can't be everywhere. But like I said, where was I? I was in Marazion the other day. We went out for um, for breakfast for my birthday with my wife, baby, and my her parents. And um, Charlie was getting a bit fussy, so I took him outside. Um, and you know the Godolphin Hotel, is it? Godolphin Arms. Next to there, there's like a little 
sort of green area with like, it's almost like, just like a little garden really. And they've got like these statues of these dolphins outside. And I walked in there and this guy came over and said hello and said he watches the video. Um, can't remember your name, so I'm sorry if you are here and I've forgotten it. But just come over and say hello. You know, I'm always, always happy to say hello. How did you choose the Love Sunday's YouTube name? So I used to work in the pub trade. So, so, so for anyone that didn't hear that, that question was, how did I choose the Love Sunday's YouTube name? And I used to work in the pub trade. So I used to work every weekend, every bank holiday, every every evening, pretty much 60, 70, 80, 90 hour weeks. I was a manager. So, you know, you can't expect your staff to sort of work the hours if you're not willing to put them in yourself. And I used to hate Sundays pretty much because it, you know, it's a day where you should be spending it with your family and your friends and just sort of enjoying yourself. And I used to work every Sunday and it was normally at the worst day of the week to work. So I hated it. And I always said that if I ever got out of the pub trade, I would make the most of the weekend. And that's kind of what I do and what I wanted to do with this channel. I want to enjoy the weekend. I want to love Sundays. And that's what I do now. So, but it's, so on that respect, it's kind of like me wanting people to sort of take from my example and actually on the days when you're at home and you're thinking, oh, should we go out today or should we stay in? Sometimes it's nice to have a lazy day, don't get me wrong. But, you know, the amount of times that I've gone out and done something when I've not felt like it and I've not regretted it and I've made memories and I've had a good time. And uh, it's just about sort of getting out of the house, isn't it? And it's like the other week I went, I went out in my van, didn't film it. Um, and I was just like, it was, I just went out for the night in my van and I went, it, there was, there were waves, they weren't great, but I was like, you know, I might as well just go in the sea. And I went for a surf and I had a great time. And if I just had listened to my head when it said, no, don't, do, there's no point in even getting wet for it, then, you know, I would have probably regretted it. Well, I wouldn't have regretted it because I want to know what I missed, but I'm just glad I did. Just got to say yes to things. Uh, right. Any other questions? Totally agree for the reason for... Uh, where's it gone? Having spent years in the trade too. Yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? People don't realise how much work goes into running pubs. I remember I was, if anyone knows Falmouth, I used to run the chain locker, right? And it was summer, peak summer, and somebody was down on holiday and they came in and they spoke to me and they said, ah, oh, this is lovely, isn't it? He goes, I'm thinking of retiring in Cornwall and um, I'm running a pub. Would you give me any advice? And I said, yeah, don't do it. I said, it's not, it's not, it's, it's really hard work to run a successful pub. Really hard work. So I pretty much just talked him out of it and just said, look, mate, just retire and just don't work. When did you leave the pub in Falmouth? Um, 20, 2018, I think. I think it was about two years before I started this channel. Are you going to be doing another camper van reaction video? Really enjoyed it and would love to show you my NATO green Overland Vivaro. Yes, I am. You can still send your, uh, I haven't got anything written down. I would put it on here. If I was editing this video, I would put my email address on here, but I'm not. So you can still send your, um, vi van videos they have to be videos okay and the reason is is because if you send me pictures which is great I love looking at your your vans in pictures but as soon as I open the email I see it and then the reaction's gone whereas if you send me a link to a video or if you send me a video until I've clicked on it I haven't seen it 
and then it's sort of more of a sort of blind live reaction. So you can still send them to me at love sun what is it? Love Sundays reacts at gmail.com. All one word, no spaces, no dots or anything. Um and I will do another reaction video to that at some point. So what's this? I went there. James asked what is my full time job? Um I don't I do have a full time job, it's not YouTube, um, but I don't talk about it because my employer doesn't want me to to talk about it. So I'll probably review it one day when when I'm earning enough money from YouTube and I don't have to work anymore. Oh hello. Uh, exposed UK dash cams just did a super thanks. Nine ninety nine. Thank you very much. Hi Sean. Well done on changing your stream from unlisted to public on my suggestion. Thanks for all the content over the years. I appreciate all of the work you put into each and every video. And thank you very much. That's very kind. <laughs> Someone just said, hi, Sean. But I get so many different spellings of my name. Like, unbelievable. I mean, I appreciate it. If anyone's seen, um, what's that comedian called? The one who, oh, what's his name? Michael McIntyre. And he says about all the different, yo, sorry, it's like, but happy to be um, that's Alex, by the way. Alex got a YouTube channel. Check it out. Um, but yeah, so Michael McIntyre says about the, the different ways of pronouncing or spelling Sean. And people always get it wrong. But, you know, it's what it is, isn't it? Missed the beginning of this live stream. So don't know whether this has already been asked. How did you... How did you get on with your Victron solar charger? So I will, I'm going to take you under the bed in a minute because that's, you know, where the magic happens. And um, I'm going to show you my Victron solar charger and what's going on with it. But it's a bit of a mess under there. So you can look forward to that. I mentioned this before as well. Up there is I've started building my overhead cabinets. I don't really want to spoil Sunday's video, so try not to look at it. Maybe I should just put a bottle opener there or something. Like up here. How do you do this? There you go. See, it's gone now. Uh, how do you spell then sh shorehorn? <laughs> Funny. S-H-A-U-N. Okay. So not the Irish way, even though my great grandmother was from Kilkenny, so it probably should be spelt the Irish way. Um, but yeah, so S-H-A-U-N, S-E-A-N is the Irish way, S-H-A-W-N is like the American way or something. So, What do you do for a profession? I'm curious. I'm a Spartan. Uh, never seen so many Boltons. Ian Bolton. <laughs> Brendan loves Sunday's bottle openers. Brenda did. Branded loves Sunday's bottle openers. Sorry, I can't read, obviously. No, this, this is a bottle opener. Um, it was wedding favours at our wedding. It's a flip-flop. And it says, uh, Kate and Sean... 23rd of April 2022. I struggled with that. You'd think I'd know what day I got married, wouldn't you? But I'm a bloke, unfortunately. So, um, right. So we've talked about... I should probably be ticking off what I've what I've got on my list of things to talk about. We've talked about what's happening with the Vivaro. Excellent. I'm going to thank everyone again for the Teen Cancer Trust, who everyone who donated, because we are currently on... Ready? Wait for it. Wait for it. Hang on. We are currently on £495. Wow, so that's gone up £80. It's gone up £80 since I mentioned it earlier. Unbelievable. You guys are absolute legends. Darren Clark, we're all behind you. What a legend. £80 and £20 gift aid. Mate, seriously, thank you so much. I was, 
yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. I was going to say, Thomas just woke up and came in and said, is that Love Sundays? So he's watching now. Hi, Thomas. It's all down to you, mate. Thank you. Would you get a Love Sundays tattoo, Ben Sullivan? No, I wouldn't. Um, not because I don't believe in my brand. Of course I believe in my brand. But, I don't know, I just, I, I just wouldn't do it. I want to get, like, I do want to get more tattoos. I've got some really shocking ones, like a lot of sort of, I, you know, I'm a 90s kid. I was born in the 80s, but I'm a 90s kid. So I've got a lot of naff tribal tattoos that were cool back in like the two, 90s, 2000s, but they're not anymore. So... What watch is that, mate? I mentioned this earlier. It is. It looks really expensive, but it's a Casio Duro. It's a dive watch. Um, 200 metres. See? But um, it's not expensive. You can get them on Amazon for like £52. It does come with like a cheap plastic strap, and I just put a metal bracelet on it. I like watches, and I stopped wearing watches ages ago because I don't know why. I think it's because... My watch just stopped working, and but I've always liked watches, and I've started wearing them again because after that camping trip, where my phone died and I had no way of knowing what the time was, I was like, I should just start wearing watches again. So, uh, do you think you would ever do the Wild Atlantic Way? Never say never. Love the roof video. Really impressive finish. Can't take any credit for that. That was my dad. Uh, did you sort your cupboard doors? Oh, what, Bob, are you talking about the unevenness of them? No, <laughs> I haven't because, uh, I mean, it's pretty simple to do it. I've just not got around to it. So if it's levelling up the gaps, I haven't done that. Have I fixed the fact that they don't shut properly? No, I haven't. Look, I still have blue tape on them. See, blue tape. You know, but that's, I do actually have clips to keep them shut now, but I just not got around to fitting them yet because I do work full time. I have a son and most of my time is taken up making YouTube videos. Uh, what's your, what your name? Do you, have you got another, enough blue tape? Uh, yeah, somewhere. I'll keep an eye out for your van as I deliver to the, to the garage cool what clips are you fitting um i'm flitting flitting i'm fitting um it was on my dad's recommendation the ones that they put in yachts um you can get them off amazon and they're like these little black ones and they kind of clip in and do that so that's what i'm gonna that's what i'm gonna install I watch loads of these videos on van life and still can't get my head around how the electrics. Could you explain how it works to, in thick people terms? Trudy, I am a thick person. I don't know. I literally bought a kit with all the wires and everything so that I could just follow a schematic. Um, my knowledge on it is very, very low, um, but you have a lot of different ways in which you can charge your leisure battery through the van, through the solar, um, lots of things like that. Uh, I have your van. Tell me if you want it. That's a that's the random. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, you don't have my van because I'm in it. So very weird. Anyway, uh, right. So. What are we looking for in time? Could I also... What you used to film? Rick and his van wants to know what I used to film. All of my camera gear is on my um, website. Uh, it's just links to like um, Amazon, so you can buy it from there. But I, I use a lot of different cameras. I use a lot of Canons. Um, Hang on, I've got some here. I don't want to bore everyone that's not interested in camera stuff, but I'll just show you my camera bag quickly. Right. So, 
find out how many people aren't interested in this now by the amount of people that click off. I'll make this quick, okay? Just for whoever that was that asked me. So most of my shooting is on this Canon M50. It's got a flip out screen so I can see what I'm filming. Just like this, look. See, so that's, that's you guys right there. Hello, right? That's my main camera. Not very expensive. I then have a little point and shoot, which is a Canon G7X. This has a flip up screen, so you can still see what you're shooting. I have two GoPros. I've got this one, which is a seven, which is great. Um, you know, you can get these pretty cheap now under 300 quid. I also have a Hero 7 Mini, this one. What else do I have? I've got my drone. People ask me about my drone and it's it's not even, it's like, four years old or something it's the original mavic mini for the amount that i fly it like, i don't really need to upgrade it i also have a insta 360 camera um, and i film a lot of stuff on my phone as well so right that's it about cameras i'm not talking about that anymore but it doesn't really matter what you film on because you know as long as you can shoot what you need to shoot and actually um like tell the story that you need to tell like you can shoot it on your phone audio is a lot more important than uh than than the visual side of it right i'm back let me get back in here let me get back in this table as fun as it is which you probably can't see hang on this table here is uh it's great, but it's not, I don't really think it's in the right place. It makes it quite hard to maneuver around when I've, uh, when I'm in here. Right, what does that say? I thought you had the old fashioned type of camera where you have to wind the big hand to hold the flash in one hand. <laughs> Sometimes it looks like that with my filming. I found myself saying cheers in your accent all the time now. Cheers! <laughs> yeah. I mean, I like, I never really thought about the cheers at the end of my videos and I, I don't, I've started doing it more now because people seem to say that they miss it when I don't say it. So, could you make us a short VR video? I wouldn't even know how to make a VR video. I mean, I suppose I could do it with my Insta360, couldn't I? But no idea how to do that and I'm not, I'm not even sure if I've got the software to do that but you know maybe at some point when I've got more time on my hands. Any day trips planned I can recommend Princetown. Princetown's lovely I could actually go to um what was it Bob uh Dartmoor Prison couldn't I if I went to Princetown. Um I, I've got a friend that lives in Paynton Brendan, he's been in the videos a few times. He wants me to sort of do some stealth camps up in Devon, so I will be heading up there at some point. Um, where is the best place to visit in Cornwall? We love to explore the North Coast, but where would you recommend? So many places, Kelly. I don't know. Um, in the There's a fly in here, it's annoying me. It's like one of those big ones. Um, there's so many places. I would probably, in the summer months, stay away from Perrinporth because it gets so busy, unless you like that sort of thing. Out you go. Out you go. <laughs> it's going everywhere but the door. Gets out. I'm going to leave this door open for a little bit. He might go out on his own. Um, loads of places, but I like the sort of... The North Coast is lovely, but I like to go in the sea. So for me, unless I'm surfing, I kind of go to the sort of South Coast. One fly out, ten fly back in. That's true. Hello from Penzance. Yeah, probably will be letting more in now, to be fair. Have you set your MPV charger and connect battery settings? I will. 
Where are you? Porth Keris. Porth Keris is awesome. I would actually highly recommend that place. I did love staying there. I'm going to go there again in this van once I can sort of get back out in it. Can I ask how long do you spend editing uh, versus filming a 15 minute video? So if I'm filming a video, it's literally, I'll go out at, I don't know, whatever time I go out and then I'll film for 24 hours. So it'll be, well, not 24 hours because I sleep for some of it, but it'll be start on one day. So I'll go out on a Saturday and then I'll go home on the Sunday. So that'll be like the full sort of day of filming, but I don't film everything I do. I just film the best bits. And then editing, it normally takes me about an hour per 30 seconds. No, no, probably about an hour a minute. So if it's a, if it's a 15 minute video, it'd take me 15 hours. And I know that seems like a really long time, but I'm very niggly with everything. Like, you know, to the second, each cut, you know, I'm very, very particular about it. So I can, I could probably speed through an edit in five hours, but then it's going back and fine combing it. And then I'm gonna have to do some voiceovers and things like that. So all these things sort of, sort of mount up. But what I tend to do with editing is once my son's in bed, I then literally, so I go to work, get home, have dinner, put my bath bed for the boy and then I'll literally just sit on the sofa and just edit until midnight and I'll go to sleep and then the next day I'll do the same and I'll do it in the evening. So, How's your camping card idea going, yummy mummy? I have, um, I've kind of like, left it for a minute. I'm sort of doing a bit more research into sort of stealth camping and what the laws are. Um, simply because, I mean, the whole point of the card, a lot of people, I had mixed reviews from it and a lot of people didn't like it. A lot of people did like it. And it's not gonna, oh, that light's just gone out. A lot of people aren't, um, I don't think they really got what I was saying. I wasn't saying that you would need it to be able to stay in, in laybys. Uh, what I was trying to say was that um, you would have it so that you could stay in like council car parks. I'm just going to switch to the light. I said I was going to say it so that you could stay in council car parks as opposed to like staying in pissy smelling laybys, and um, you know because they're missing a beat. That's that's revenue that they're not getting because because you know they're not allowing people to stay there. So. That was the sort of idea with the card, but to be fair, you know, I'm sort of still sort of researching more into, you know, what the laws are with getting moved on and things. Like it's all to do with like obstruction and things like that. So as long as you're not causing an obstruction, I've got loads of moths in here now. As long as you're not causing uh, like a obstruction, then there's not really a lot that they can do about it. I'm just reading a few more comments. Terry says, ah, I've got the same light. I know you have, Terry, because I told you to get it. Could, can anyone see this moth buzzing around? Probably not, but it is attracted to my lights. So now, not only have I got a fly in here, I now have a moth in here. Okay. Hello mate, me and my girlfriend planning to move to Cornwall. To which town or city would we should move? Falmer for Nuki. Right, so Nuki is fine if you like sort of surfing things. As far as like as towns go, Falmer's probably a lot more welcoming. Um because they've got like a university there, the locals are sort kind of sort of more used to sort of outsiders move into their town. Um, you can get a bit of like negativity if you'd plan to move to Cornwall, but the only thing I would say is that if you can work remotely, Cornwall's fine because you can, you know, work remotely. You could have a London job and work in Cornwall and still earn a different, decent amount of money. But the problem with Cornwall is that house prices are ridiculous, but the wages are terrible. So if you're looking to move down here and work 
and actually earn a decent living, it's near on impossible unless you sort of work for yourself. And then even with that, it's, it's you know, not that great. So a lot of people say to me a lot of time, I'm really lucky to sort of live in Cornwall, but it's, a, if anything, it's something that you, there's a lot of things that you give up to live here. There's a lot of things that you sacrifice so that you can live in this, in, in this part of the world. And yeah, it's not easy going down here. I think Cornwall's like the, one of the poorest counties in the UK, so. Okay, Falmouth is great. Used to have everything on tap in Beerwolf. Beerwolf's a great bar. It's quite nice in there. You can actually uh, read books while you while you drink beer. Right, so well, I'm going to start showing you around now. So for those of you that have already seen under under the bed, I'm still going to sort of show you anyway. But And then we'll get to what's going on with the engine. Let me know if you lose signal, because last time I did this, a lot of people lost signal. Fused traffic and overcrowded in most towns of the south. Oh, that's what we got here. So you have to like eating Cornish pasties. <laughs> we don't necessarily have to. Alex Bolton, two pound. Mate, you don't have to do that. Cornwall, awesome for holidays, that's for sure. Mobile signal terrible down there. It can be. I've got 5G most of the time when I'm up here. Right, so I flipped you around. Probably shouldn't have done that because the light's facing the wrong way. Here we go. So someone was asking about my solar and uh, it's not showing anything at the moment because it's nighttime, but I had a problem with the AF. It turned out it was the AF. So I disconnected it and I've bypassed with this extra wire straight into my bus bar, which is my AF bus bar. And it worked for exactly one day. It worked for a day and now it's not working again. So. I actually had like a full on lengthy conversation with a guy called Eddie, who's a subscriber and we FaceTimed and I sat under here and we talked about this and we troubleshot everything, tried all the different wires and I've made a proper mess. I mean, a lot of this can just be tucked away, but I got it working. I was like, yes, it's working. And now it's, uh, it's not. <laughs> Wendo, I brought lube. Thanks mate. <laughs> So at the moment, I'm, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go to a proper electrician somewhere and get them to, like a 12 volt electrician, get them to look at it. Um, my, I've tried contacting Victron, but all of the sort of contact numbers for them are, um, are in America and, you know, I don't know. I can't, I can't work that out. I'm not intelligent enough. So that's what's going on with that. I'm going to have a quick chat with you now about what's going on with the van. It's probably too dark outside now, but we're going to go out there. Let me know if we lose signal, okay? Because uh, I won't know. But so engine wise, right? So before we go out there, I'm just going to talk to you about what happened with the engine originally, right? So what happened with the engine when it broke down, the oil light came on, it was because the oil pump had exploded inside the engine and all that sort of swarf and everything got all in the engine. And what the garage said to me was that we could just replace the oil pump and you could just like take the risk or what we could do is you could just bite the bullet and just buy a new engine. And the only reason why I bought a new engine was because if I had taken the risk, it would have cost me more money in the long run because the swarf in the oil may have actually caused further problems down the line, which would have meant eventually I would have had to have put a new engine in it anyway. So I just bit the bullet and just did it. That was that. With the new engine, the only thing that you get, oh, it's really dark out here now. The only thing that you get with a new engine is a new engine. So it's an engine, a head. You don't get a transmission. You don't get a new um, clutch or anything. It's all part of the transition. Transmission. So the only thing that I got was the engine block and the head. And obviously timing and all that lot, pistons, all of that was in there. 
so then all of a sudden the the turbo started whistling and it was literally about like a few few days really after picking it up um it just we went on that trip to um hendra with my family and that's when it started playing up and let me know whose toes come off no no so we fought that so i took it back to them they put um a smoke tester on it and um put a smoke tester on it that didn't work well it did work but no smoke was coming out of any holes and i was saying well it's probably because it's turbo it needs to get the pressure up to actually um get the smoke to come out so i was like really revving it and nothing was happening so anyway they said look we can't look at it now because I literally just pulled off outside their garage and was like, let's have a look at it. They wanted to get up on the ramps. So they said, keep driving it. It should be fine. Then I went to Porth Town, which you just saw in the video, and it was getting worse and worse and worse. So I rang them up. I booked it back in. They got it on the ramps and they reckon now it's the manifold. So they reckon there's like a, a something where the turbo boost leak is coming out through the manifold, whatever. Anyway, so they've got to order me a new part. They've still said, you can probably drive it, but reduce your driving it. When I drove it home from the garage, I could smell diesel. And I was like, okay, this isn't right. So, you probably were not gonna be able to see this now because it's so dark. But under here, you see all this? That is all diesel. I've actually put a bucket under there now. So, the issue that I've got now is that it's pissing out diesel everywhere. So I can't drive it anyway. What would show via smoke test? Well, a smoke test would show that there was a leak, you know, show the smoke coming out of, of the pipes and things like that. So, so I've then said to them, well, what have you done to the van when you were checking? testing the terrible did you disconnect any fuel lines and they said they didn't touch anything so now i was going to take it straight back to them and just say look get this sorted but it was leaking so much and i was like i've got work to do on the van i might as well just not use it for a week or whatever until they get the new manifold in and then when it goes in they can just sort that out as well uh sell it and get a vw crafter <laughs> i've had vws in the past and i had problems with them so poor Blundo. So when I had my VW T5, I literally had drive shafts went, I had a gearbox blow up, I had a dual mass flywheel break, blow up. I mean, that's clutch anyway, so that's just wear and tear, but I've always had problems with, with VWs as well. So it's just me, I've just cursed, I think. But at least it won't rust. Well, that is true. Um, but, you know, I've wax sealed under this fan, so hopefully it doesn't rust either. <laughs> I think sprinters are the worst for rusting anyway, to be fair. Um, so that's the situation with the van. So at the moment, I can't actually drive it. I can't drive it. Well, I can drive it, but I'm not going to drive it because I'm just losing diesel and it's not that safe. Um, so I'm just sort of using my old van still. And so I'm glad I didn't actually get rid of it. Um, but yeah, that's about it with the van, really. If I went back, and this is what I keep telling myself, I paid £11,000 for this van, okay, with 130,000 miles on the clock, which is a lot of money for the mileage, but transits aren't the most expensive vans. But if I'd spent an extra five grand on the van, so say I spent 16 grand on it, I would have got one for like, which had a, probably about, it's, between 40 and 80,000 miles on the clock. But now, essentially, I've got a van where the engine has got um, no miles on the clock, but obviously all the other running gears still done 130,000 miles. So I think the way I did it was probably not the best way, but I've just got to live with it now, haven't I, really? You spent so much time building the van Guess it's why you put new engine in. That is exactly why. If I hadn't spent all of my time, all of my free time doing this van up, I would have just got rid of it. But like like the Vivaro, you know, I pretty much built that van over the course of a week. Um, 
if that blew up, then I wouldn't have any problems getting rid of it because I could just buy another van and convert another one to the same spec in a short period of time. So, what head height are you left with from left with room from for six foot seven? I am five foot nine. Okay, so I'm not the tallest in the world. And I've put a, a floor in this van, so it's slightly higher, and a ceiling, and that's how much head space I've got. Quite a bit. Am I planning a beach clean? I did do one a few years ago, and that actually went really well. Um, but not a lot of people turned up for it, so I might do one at some point. I do normally quite enjoy doing them, but the problem is, the majority of my viewers aren't based down here, so it's quite difficult for them to sort of get to see get to meet up and everything everyone has to be on holiday at the same time any plans to fit a window in the sliding door not decided yet i'm gonna just replace this wood get it painted and then i might add a door at window at some point but again i like the confinedness of it it doesn't feel dark in here so all right we are getting close to an hour so i will be starting to wrap it up let me just make sure I have talked about everything that I wanted to. Uh, right, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that, done that. Um, I was going to say thank you to everyone that's bought me a beer as well through the link in the description. Um, you're legends, I would say that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, if it, again, a lot of that money... I went towards the engine, so there's no way I could have done any of that. Or like, I would have been sat in a very expensive non-moving van, which would technically just be a shed, if it wasn't for everyone donating that via that. So that's been fantastic. Also, I've been getting a lot of orders recently um, for my t-shirts and merchandise and things. So I do really appreciate that. For anyone that doesn't know, I do sell Love Sundays t-shirts, mugs and things. It's all on my website, lovesundays.uk. Um, you can check it out there, but I'm sort of planning a little bit more, um, doing a few sort of be bespoke van type things that I'm going to be sort of selling. Um, it's an early sort of idea that I've had, but it will be just a way that I want to go forward with this with this business, essentially. Because um, there's lots of ideas that I have. I think, oh, that'd be really good for my van. And I was thinking, oh, I could actually probably make those and sell them. So. At some point, that will come into uh, come into play. I'm going to start to wrap it up um, because even though this has only been 52 minutes, I did do a half an hour one before this that failed. I really need a pee. Nobody needs to see that. Um, I'm not just going to... You don't want to see me go on the dunny, dear. Dis disgusting. Uh, <laughs> this isn't only fans. And I'm going to just take one last question and then we're going to go. Got to go London bus driver, early shift. Cheers, Desmond. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Cheers. Um, also, any ideas, Any if anyone has anything that they want me to cover on my Wednesday videos that I'm going to be doing, I leave it on the description, leave it on the video that, that I posted last Wednesday, which was the reacting to your vans. Just say, here's an idea for a reaction video or something like that. Let me know and I'll try to see if I can get it made. Uh, just bought you a beer. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, thanks, everyone. Here's the outside of the van. It's very dark here. There's the... Yeah. Woohoo! Right. Cheers, and I will see you on Sunday for the next video. Bye!